This is the reason that I always tell people, when you're first saved, number one, you are extremely vulnerable. If you could picture a turtle with no shell, they, they go through a period where they shed a shell, and now they're very soft. Or a crab, a crab, let's, let's put it with that. A crab that sheds its shell, I know they shed, and they're developing a new one. They're very vulnerable. Oh my goodness, anything can harm them at that point if they're not really careful. Well, that's the way it is a lot of times when we give our hearts to the Lord and we come out of the world, out of the darkness into his marvelous light. It's like all of a sudden, oh my goodness, I'm out here butt naked. You know, I have nothing to protect myself with. I, I used to have a dagger for a tongue. You know, I could cut somebody up one end and cuss them down the other. Well, I can't do that anymore. So how do I deal with these things? Well, this is what I want to share with you. A lot of times when you come, I'm not really dealing with how to deal with wanting to cuss somebody out. I'm, uh, what I'm talking about is when you come to church, you're new, you're very vulnerable, and you're coming as damaged goods. As much as you may not want to admit it, you are wounded. You come in wounded, baby. That's why you're in the emergency. You're wounded. And not only are you wounded, but you're extremely sensitive. And this is where a lot of things go wrong when people first give their hearts to the Lord and they get into the body of Christ. They're engrafted now. Well, somebody does something, says something, looks at them a certain way, or doesn't react in a certain way. And we as vulnerable ones read a whole lot of dialogue into that. And we draw conclusions based off of a smoke screen from our own insecurities. And we're ready to run. We're ready to leave that church and say, forget these church people. I don't want to be bothered. And then people are wondering, well, what happened to you? Your feelings were vulnerable and they got hurt off of something that wasn't even real. I'm going to share one of my experiences. The reason I share my experiences, it's always easier to, to learn from someone else's stories than it is to just read it from a book. I came to church. This was maybe, I was saved for about six months, six or eight months. <clears throat> And there was a lady who had gotten saved one year before me, and I will call her Sister Pumpkin. And another lady who, for me, in my opinion, was very mature for her age, uh, but I really liked her, and she seemed to be very genuine. Well, it was like all of a sudden she was quite aloof and distant and, 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 uh, her mind seemed to be spaced out, you know, somewhere else. And she didn't seem to be too interested in responding to my salutations or, or just me even being there for that matter. She almost didn't even acknowledge my, my presence. This is why we have to be careful. There is a scripture in the Bible that says, if you have anything against anybody in the body, you leave your gift at the altar, stop what you're doing, go deal with that issue and reconcile. If you think someone has issues with you, you stop what you're doing, you go deal with that person and reconcile. At least give it an attempt. Well, here I come, afraid, terrified, petrified of confrontation of any kind. Mm -hmm. So when I think there's a problem with Sister Apple, the one that's really mature, that's all of a sudden in La La Land, I forgot what I called her before. But anyway, let's, let's keep it Apple for now. She was standing there, and I was thinking, I've got to go home. I'm fighting the tears, and I've got to go home because she doesn't like me. 
All of a sudden now, I draw from all of her behavior that day. She doesn't like me. Now, let me tell you, when you're wounded, when you're insecure, when you're self-conscious, and you have a very low self-esteem, trust me when I say, your whole world revolves around you. Everything everybody else does has to do with you. Something you did wrong. Or something that you didn't say the right way or you didn't dress the right way or just you being there was a simple annoyance. You're not that important, trust me, and neither was I. Okay, at that point, one of my, I, I got up to act like I was going to the restroom because the tears were starting to come and I couldn't fight them anymore. So I go trotting downstairs to the restroom and I'm trying to get my face together so I can come back up and slip out the side door, never ever to return. I was hurting. I, when I tell you I was hurting, I was hurting as if somebody had really, really said something horrendous to me. I was so hurt and nobody had done anything to me. It all came from, hello, anyway, you get me? So one of the ladies, as God would have it, we'll call her Sister Pumpkin, the one who got saved the year before me. She came downstairs and she noticed how I looked and she said, what's wrong? I said, oh, nothing. No, 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 no. What's wrong? Don't let the devil tear you up like that. That's why we need the body. Because those who are more mature than we, can help us navigate through that immature stage. And she finally got it out of me. And she said, I'm going to get her to come down here. And I, no, no, I was so petrified. Well, as God would have it again, here she comes down the stairs to use the restroom. And I'm cornered like a little mouse ready to go into sudden death anyway. She, she comes in and Sister Pumpkin says, I want you to talk to Pat because she thinks something about you and, I, I, you know, you guys need to talk. She has an issue with you and that's why she's crying. So Sister Apple says, well, what's wrong? Oh, my goodness, what's wrong? And she was so compassionate. Now I'm feeling stupid, right? And I said, well, I didn't know if I did anything to upset you. I could barely talk. I was so chewed up. And you know what she said? She looked at me and she said, what are you talking about? She said, you haven't done anything. You know how embarrassed I felt? Yeah. But that taught me. You cannot just look at people or size people up and down and draw your conclusions and decide what you're going to do or be in or out of the body of Christ. You have to go to that person. That woman wasn't thinking about me. She didn't even know what I was talking about. You see what crippleness can do? I was an emotional cripple. That's not fun. And it's not a good thing either. We need to go to God, don't we? Trust me on that. You have an issue? Go as quickly as you can. Resolve that thing, baby, because it probably isn't real in the first place. God bless you as you grow, as I did, through all the growing pains.